So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand, and I welcome you to this series called RBI Twenty Four Seven. So guys, as most of you know, that in this series we discuss a set of five questions which are picked from finance and economics, current affairs, and we also take up the static concepts wherever students face problem, right? So in this session, we are going to discuss some questions that are based on the topics bonds, right? So. Uh, before moving to question number one, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel. So, if you are watching our video for the very first time, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button. It can help you to access a lot of good content that can be beneficial for you if you are preparing for competitive exams. And do not forget to press this bell icon which is flashing on the screen, as it can help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up. You can also join our Telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Right? Moving straight away to question number one. Okay, here is the question number one for today, which says, which of the following statements are not correct about callable and puttable bonds? Right? So we are talking about callable and puttable bonds, and you have to select the correct statements. Moving ahead to the solution. And the correct option for this question is option E. That means one, two, and three. All these statements are not correct. They all are incorrect, and they need correction in some sense. Now, guys, first of all, let us try to understand the meaning of callable and puttable bonds. Then we will come back to these statements and talk that why and discuss why they are incorrect. Now, talking about callable and put. Able bonds. <coughs> Sorry. See, callable bonds means the bonds which can be called back any time by the issuer. See, who can call the bonds back? The person, the entity who is issuing the bonds, or the issuer. The issuer can call back the bonds, right? So, see, whenever it is beneficial for the issuer to. Uh, call back the bonds. Call back means that the issuer is going to give you money back and take the bonds from you, right? So the contract is ends there. So the issuer can call the bonds back at any time, which is uh, beneficial to the issuer. And when is calling the bonds going to get beneficial for the issuer? When the issuer is able to raise money at lower cost of borrowing than what he is providing you. See. Let us try to understand this with the help of an example. There is a company called A Limited. A Limited needs to raise money. That is why it came out with some bonds, right? So now you, as an investor, <coughs> bought these bonds. But see, A Limited was expecting. Let's say currently on this bonds, A Limited is providing you with a six percent coupon rate, right? According to the Rates which are prevalent in the market, but A Limited is expecting that the rates are going to go down, and in future it might be beneficial to raise. It might be cheaper to raise funds, right? So that is why A Limited tells you that these bonds are callable, right? Now, why are you going to buy these callable bonds when you know they can be called back at any time and you have some sort of reinvestment risk, right? So usually these bonds they are available at Discount. They are cheaper than the other bonds because obviously it is going to provide a limited with an option, right? So they are issued at discount, right? So if in future, let's say the market rate falls to five percent, now if a limited takes the bonds back from you and ends your ends the contract with you. And issues new bonds, then you would have to provide. Uh, then that entity would have to provide a five percent interest rate, which is lesser than six percent, right? So do you see the benefit to A Limited? So that is why, if the issuer is expecting the interest rates to fall, he might uh, that issuer might go for callable bonds. And callable bonds they come with inherent risk for the bondholder, which is called the reinvestment risk. Because this bondholder, then might not be able to find any investment which is going to provide him with fifth six percent interest rate because the rates have fallen to five percent, right? But the good part here is that 
that these bonds are available at discount that is why bond holder might be enticed to buy them right now coming to putable bonds putable bonds they provide option to the bond holder that bond holder at any time can give back shares to the issuer now try to imagine an opposite situation when is it when is it going to be beneficial for the bond holder to give the bonds back to the issuer when bond holder has some more has some opportunity which provides him with higher coupon rate or if other bonds in the market are available at higher coupon rate which provides him with a higher interest in that case bond holder can return the issuer the, uh, the bond back to the issuer and can buy some new bonds uh, providing him or her with a higher interest rate right because if this interest rate 6% instead of falling to 7% it rises to 7% in that case a limited is not going to uh, call the bonds back because a limited is at a positive part he is uh, a limited is providing 6% interest rate to bond holders where others in the market they have to provide 7% so in that case if in that in this case if the bonds are puttable and provide an option to bond holder the bond holder can return the bonds back and buy some other bonds that provide him or her with a 7% interest rate right and see why would any issuer go for puttable bonds because they are beneficial for the bond holder because and if any entity they issue these puttable bonds they are expensive to the bond holder because they have they, they are being provided with an added advantage right so this is the whole story about callable and puttable bonds i hope now you are clear with it now coming to the statements here callable bond gives an obligation to the issuer to redeem the bonds statement is incorrect why because this is an option for the issuer this is not an obligation this is not something that the issuer has to do it is up to the issuer whether he want whether it wants to call the bonds back or not so it is not an obligation it is an option similarly puttable bonds they provide option to the bond holder not obligation if they want they can sell if they, if they see that it is beneficial for them and if they think it is not beneficial then they can carry on with the contract after a fixed initial time period right borrower redeems the bond back in case of a callable bond when interest rate in the market rises above the coupon rate so if the interest rate rises in that case borrower is not going to redeem the callable bond back because if if this issuer comes up with some new bonds it would have to provide a higher coupon rate as the cost of borrowing it has increased right so that is why issuer calls the bond back when cost of borrowing falls not rises that is why all the three statements they are incorrect i hope now you are clear with this doubt any callable and puttable bonds uh, this is one topic where many students face problems so i hope this is going to help you um, let us understand some more things about callable and puttable bonds okay callable bond does not give obligation i think we have discussed all the uh, points mentioned here moving ahead to the next question okay there is your second question which says which of the following statements are incorrect about different types of securities again you have to select the incorrect statements right moving ahead to the solution guys you can pause the video here and have a thorough look at the statements and then decide with your answer the correct option for this question is option a option a means 1 and 2 they are incorrect whereas the third option it is correct so 1 and 2 incorrect 1 and 2 why are they incorrect because the first option it says bonds being a fixed income asset practically carry zero default risk hence are called risk free or gilt edged securities see this is not correct because not every bond is risk free if the bond is of if the bond is if the bond belongs to corporate bond right category then it can have some risk uh, the the corporates or the company that might not be able to uh, pay back the payment which is which are payments which are associated with bonds so not all bonds but government bonds they are considered to be risk free that is why this statement is incorrect so if you remember in one session we discussed about 
social impact bonds and we discussed that they might seem like a very good option but they also pose risk to the bond holder right so if you want to know it uh, know about it in detail you can watch that video okay carrying details about social impact bonds now coming to the second statement which is dated government securities carry fixed interest rate which is the rate that is 1% more than the repo rate there is no such compulsion right usually the dated government securities they carry floating interest rate which is linked to a parameter right that is why the statement is also incorrect third statement says government central government issues both treasury bills and dated G government securities treasury bills short term dated government securities long term whereas state governments only issues long term securities which are called state development loans if you remember i uh, asked you a question about this in the in yesterday's session right so i hope now you are clear which statement is correct and which is incorrect and why here you can see the solution we have talked about these things right moving ahead to the third question for today okay here is the third question which is dash is a type of bond which involves three parties the issuer company the offered company and the investor simple question moving ahead to the solution and the solution is option e option e means foreign currency exchangeable bond that means f c e b so fcb fceb is a type of bond in which there are three entities the issuer company the offered company and the investor usually whenever uh, bonds are issued there are only two types of parties involved the issuer of the bond and the the entity which is going to buy the bond the bond holder right but here there is one more now let us try to understand the significance of each of the party okay fcb involves three parties c in this case what happens is there is going to be an issuer company the job as you can see to issue the bonds right now these um, this company is going to issue the bonds and the bonds which are issued they are convertible they are convertible into the shares of another company which is known as offered company right so convertible into the shares of offered company right one company issuing bonds and they are telling you that in future if you want you can exchange your bonds for the shares of another company which is called the offered company and obviously the last party involved is the investor who is going to buy this bond right so i hope the mechanism is clear we are going to discuss some more aspects about it okay here you can see involves three parties issuer company issues fcb in foreign currency obviously this is one part one important aspect that that fcb is they are being issued in foreign currency not in the domestic currency and these fcbs are convertible into shares of another company called the offered company forms part of the same promoter group okay this is one major point that the offered company is usually the part of or is usually the subsidiary of the issuer company right so can you think of some reasons that why issuer company is providing the shares of offered company in exchange why not issuers company's own shares for exchange so guys this is a question for you here you have to uh, think about the situation that what can be the incentive behind issuer company to provide offered companies uh, shares in exchange you can try to understand with the help of example one company x limited x limited issues bonds and mr a buy these bonds now after some time in future if mr a wants he can convert the bonds into shares of another company which was offered let's say y limited and y limited is going to be under x limited it is usually it forms part of uh, the parent organization 
x limited so why is x limited not providing its own shares in return why why limited shares so this is a question for you let's see who can answer this question right here an example is given to you so fcbs are exchangeable into the shares of offered company right so uh, this is one major point that i am asking you to find out and if you uh, see if you have any doubts about it you can always mention them on the video and we can take it up in the upcoming sessions right so uh, see uh, beneficial to the bond holder because if the offered company is 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 having potential greater growth potential so in future it its shares might be beneficial it might be beneficial to buy this company's shares in future right so this is fceb foreign currency exchangeable bond moving ahead so basically this is one uh, method to raise money overseas okay question number 4 which is mr chandler muriel bing who lives in new york has invested some money into dash bonds which are issued by an indian company after his investment indian rupee started to fall in relation to us dollar now bing is worried that bing is worried about the loss that he has to face due to this fall which is the investment that you think this mr bing has made into so the correct option for this question is very simple question masala bond now understanding what is masala bond see masala bond is a type of bond which is being issued by an indian company but outside india and denominated into rupees rather than the local currency so let's say there is let's say tata being an indian company goes to us issues bonds there because it wants to cater to the public of america or it wants some more see it might be possible that no one is willing to buy tata's bonds in india that is why uh, it is looking to going to foreign markets where the investor appetite is higher for risk right so goes to us issues bonds but not in us dollar in indian rupee see in foreign currency exchangeable bonds we learned that the the denomination of bond is in foreign currency but here it is in indian rupee right so masala is an indian word representation of spices the term was used by international finance corporation to evoke culture and cuisine of india right there are many other bonds like bulldog bonds samurai bonds you must have heard about them they basically they represent something which is which is inherent to that particular country which represents that country so that is why masala bonds masala bonds are the bonds that are issued by indian companies denominated in indian rupee hence if rupee falls the investors of masala bond face the risk right so rupee has fallen in relation to us dollar that is why that is why if uh, mr bing who has bought the bonds denominated in indian rupee if that person is going to face loss right that is why he is concerned about masala bonds right moving ahead to the last question for today okay here is your last question which is which of the following is correct about relationships between relationships between coupon rate and the price of bond so here we are talking about the current yield of bond right so there, there has to be a correction in question it talks about current yield of the bond right it talks about current yield coupon rate and the price so you have to select the so the question should be like select the correct statement from the five options moving ahead to the solution you can pause the video and have a look at them the correct option is option d option d means current yield of the bond current yield of the bond becomes more than the coupon rate when the bond is selling at discount but becomes less than the coupon rate when the bond is selling at premium okay now let us try to understand this question first of all we have to understand the meaning of current yield okay guys here you can see we are talking about current yield not the market interest rate so current yield is the reward that is earned by a bond investor and how is it calculated it is calculated by dividing annual coupon payment so whatever coupon payments the investor is getting you have to divide these annual coupon payments with the purchase price that investor has invested right 
So let's say there is a bond which pays 6% interest rate and the face value is rupees 1000. But there is an investor who has bought this bond at rupees 900, right? So now, guys, if you try to find out current yield here, you can divide the annual coupon rate. The annual coupon rate is going to be rupees 60 on face value. So 60 divided by 900, right? See, the coupon rate is 6%. But if you divide 60 by 900, you are going to get an amount which is slightly higher than 6%. Right? So see, because this investor has bought the bond at discount or at less than face value, that is why his return is more than the coupon payment, right? Because he is getting rupees 60 here and the denominator is also reduced because of the discount that he got. So that is why if there is if the bond is selling at discount, the current yield of the, the current yield of the bond becomes higher than the coupon rate. Whereas if we consider the opposite situation, if the bond, if the investor buys the bond at let's say 1100, right, and you divide 60 by 1100, then obviously it is going to be slightly lesser than, um, slightly lesser than 6%. So that is why if the bond is selling at premium, the current yield becomes lesser than the coupon payment, right. So this is the question. Now, so, uh, let us check the correct statement. The correct statement was option D. Okay, option D says current yield becomes more than the coupon payment when bond is selling at discount because the investor is having the benefit of discount as well as he is getting the coupon payment. That is why the current yield becomes more than what the, what, what the coupon rate is. And whenever the bond is selling at premium, the current yield comes down the coupon rate or it becomes less than the coupon rate, right? So this is the relationship of current yield. I hope you are clear with the concept of current yield, the formula and its relationship between coupon with coupon rate and the price, right? So guys, this is it for today. These were the five questions for today. I hope you learned something new from this video and found this video beneficial. If you did, then do not forget to hit the like button because I'll be back in next session with some new, with some more information. Until then, you take care of yourself, keep your studies going on and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you for being here.